But what is trellis coding? Well, trellis coding is a version of convolutional coding uh, where the coded bits are not sent at a higher data rate, which means more bandwidth, but instead a modulation format is used with a higher number of symbols, more symbols. So for example, in this case, this is a two-third rate convolutional coder um, where you, without the coding, you were sending two bits, you could have used four PSK, but with the coding, you need to send three coded bits and you would send eight PSK. So let's look at what the trade-offs are and how you go about this uh, in, in the trellis coding method. So here's, here's a, an example, convolutional code plus a direct line through bit. So one of the bits gets sent directly uncoded and the other bit gets coded. And here's a trellis for this convolutional coded component. And this trellis here, uh, it's got three states in the shift register. So there are two, um, two states in the trellis. And it's a standard trellis uh, where you can transition from 0, 0 to 0, 0, for example. This is the, the state defined here. Uh, and the next element that comes in defines what it goes. So if it's in 0, 0, and there's a 0 here, it shifts across, the next state will be 0, 0. If there's a 1 here, the next state would be 1, 0. And so this would be this branch down here. And in green, I've shown the values of the coded bits two and three in each of these time slots. So uh, if it made this transition here from zero, zero to one, zero, then it, we, we would have one, zero, zero in the shift register. And the output of C2 would be one, and the output from C3 would be zero. I've shown them here. So this is a standard trellis for this standard three element shift register. In the case of this uh, code here with a direct straight through path, each one of these paths is going to have two different transitions. We could draw an, a, an, a second transition for each of these transitions here where we label it with C1 as well. So this one could be doubled up and one of the paths would be 0, 0, 0 if we included C1. So if it, we showed all three, 0, 0, 0, and the other one would be 1, 0, 0. So for every path here, uh, we should put the value of C1 in front of it and draw a parallel path. And so now let's think of uh, making decisions in the Viterbi decoder. And if you're not familiar with that uh, process, there's a video in the link below on Viterbi decoding. Uh, you need to look at the shortest paths, and those shortest paths are going to be the ones that are most effect, make most effect on the decision making. Uh, and so these this, if we, for every one of these branches, there's another parallel branch, then they are the shortest differentiated paths. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that you want to keep in your constellation diagram, you would like the modulation points to be far apart for the 110, sorry, for the 100 and the 000, because those ones are the ones that you're going to be making decisions uh, in the decision tree with the least amount of information, just one symbol period of information because it starts at the same state and goes to the same state. Uh, one of them would be 000, the other one would be 100, and you've got to make that decision just based on one time slot of measurement. So those are the most uh, critical ones that are going to cause you the most number of errors. Uh, so what we're going to say is we'd like in our mapping to our constellation points, we'd like to keep the zero and whatever C2 and C3 are uh, far apart in our constellation diagram from the point which is mapped one and then the same C2 and C3. So these are going to be critical for every one of these paths here. There's two different branches. One of them for whichever value of C2 and C3 it is here, there'll be one that's zero and one that's one. Okay, and let's see what I uh, mean about that. So let's, to, to think about that, let's first look at the standard gray mapping. So this would be how you would map the bits to the constellation points if you were simply doing standard gray mapping. And if you remember, and there's a link to a video uh, below, but gray mapping is where each of the constellation points that is near to each other only differs by one data uh, one in the data. So because that's the, if you're at this one, if this one was really sent, the most likely 
mistake or the most likely error would be to decode a symbol that neighbors this symbol. So it would be either this one or this one. And if you've mapped this to 001 and this one to 010, then if you made those symbol errors, you'd only be making one bit error out of the three bits. So the bit error rate would only be one third of the symbol error rate. Well, this is gray mapping, and this makes sense if you are doing every detection just on its own. So if there is no structure in the data symbols, uh, there's no structure in the code, if there's no code, uh, and, this, and the data is independent from one time slot to the next, then gray mapping is the best thing to do. But in trellis coding, you want a different mapping, and that's one of the keys to trellis coding. So let's, let's look at here. We, what have we said back here? We'd like in our, in our mapping here onto the constellation points, we'd like 0, C2, C3 to be far away from 1, C2, C3. So let's give an example of that. So we would like to map uh, 0, 0, 0 to this 8 PSK, so this is 8 PSK. So to that symbol, the sine wave with zero phase offset, we would map to 0, 0, 0, and we would map uh, over here the opposite to 1, 0, 0, because they are going to be in the trellis. They are the shortest paths. Uh, you've got the least information to make a decision between those two paths, so you'd like them to be furthest apart in the constellation diagram so that you have a least chance of making that error. That will make this decision the easiest. If they're far apart in the constellation diagram, then this decision will be easiest. And these are the critical decisions, the ones on the shortest paths. Okay, so that's uh, one of them that you'd like to have like this. Uh, well, what is another uh, situation? So another situation that we're also interested in is the other shortest path. So that's the, that's the shortest path, but another path, as we know, uh, I'll draw it over the top of this one, and we've seen it in other trellis uh, diagrams here. Um, uh, in fact, actually, you can see it directly from here. For C2 and C3, here we're making a decision between 0, 0 and 1, 0. So you'd like a C2 and C3 for 0, 0 to be far apart from 1, 0. And you'd also like uh, here 1, 1 to be far apart from 0, 1. Okay, so we want uh, zero for C2 and C3, we want 0, 0 to be far apart from 1, 0, and we want 1, 1 to be far apart from 0, 1. Okay, so here's the map. We've got the 0, 0 one here. So we're going to put uh, 1, 0, uh, which has got to be far apart from 0, 0. The furthest apart from the ones we've got left is up here. So this one will put 0, 1, 0, and this one 1, 1, 0. We, of course, we want those to be far apart because that's the first rule up here. And then for the other ones, we'd like them also to be uh, far apart. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1. So you can see from the trellis, it's telling us if we're going to be making our decisions based on the trellis, which uses the structure in our coded bits, then we want a mapping which is not the same as gray coding. In fact, it's quite the opposite if you look at this example here. So in the trellis coded mapping on the constellation diagram, the 0, 0, 0 constellation point is right next to the 1, 1, 1, which is exactly the opposite to what we try and do in gray mapping. So here, if you made a symbol error here, you'd be making three bit errors. And if you are only doing it based on that one symbol, you'd make a lot of errors. But because you're using the structure of the code, the structure of the convolution, which comes out in the trellis where you're using decisions over multiple time slots using the Viterbi algorithm, uh, it actually turns out that it's a, it's a beneficial thing to do because you're keeping paths which are close in the trellis far apart in the constellation diagram. And that's the key to trellis coding. In some ways, it should be called trellis decoding because the key is in the way you go about doing the decoding and the mapping to the constellation points. So don't forget, if you found this video helpful, to like the video. It helps others to find it. And subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check the list below for links to related videos.